much for the presentation, uh, Mr. Matthias Subimendi of, um, of the China RPR uh, SME Health Desk. A lot of uh, experiences and a lot of tips and even some case studies of the importance of securing your IP uh, rights here in China. So for today's program, we are moving a little bit more around and we are jumping now to uh, Ms. Ma Jinjin of the Chinese Association of Circular Economy who will present, uh, we'll, we're moving over to our case study part now, and uh, this will be our next case study. Wait a moment, sorry. We can hear you just fine, uh, Ms. Ms. Marjintin, but we cannot see you at this point. Now we can now we can see you as well. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, wait a moment. Okay. Well, sorry. Okay. Thank you for the SME centers when invitation to join this session. I saw a lot of friends uh, attending the offline workshop. It's pity I can't join the offline uh, workshop to meet with all friends as I have, I have to join another web webinar later. So thank you all, thank you the organizer to address the, uh, my speech time. Uh, so I will begin my presentation. Mm. Today, my topic is how to find circular economy opportunities in China for European companies, especially SMEs. I will give some advices and successful cases. I hope there is something useful you could find. As we know, China has a huge uh, circular economy market. According to the estimation, the total output value of resources recycling industries will reach a uh, 3 trillion RMB in 2020, which bring great opportunities for European companies entering Chinese market. So I think the companies, especially SMEs, uh, could pay attention to the following areas in China to find any market opportunity. For example, in the traditional areas, we still need to learn from successful uh, garbage management experiences in European countries. In the new areas, as China has enacted the policies on governance and the control of the plastic pollution, which has brought a lot of market demands, such as the market for the eco-friendly alternatives to plastics, especially to be used in specific products which are easy to have leakage to the environment. Next, what should we draw attention to when European circular economy companies enter China? I think the first important is to learn relevant circular economy laws, regulations, and policies issued at the central and local levels. Secondly, the company should have advanced technologies and products, even good business models in circular economy areas, especially those are still black in China or have strong competitiveness. Thirdly, um, Finding local partners are also essential to the, the, the European companies. Consulting with Chinese enterprises and uh, intermediaries such as CCC to learn more about the circular economy market in China and find collaboration opportunities. Lastly, 
I think it's also necessary to have detailed market uh, investigation before Chinese market, before entering Chinese market. So besides for these advices I proposed, I will introduce what CCE could help when European circular economy enterprises enter China, especially SMEs. Firstly, I will uh, give a int brief introduction of our association. CCE, China Association, Ocean, 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 Association, sorry, Association of Circular Economy is a nation, national level non-governmental association. association. Uh, registered in MC, covering each area of circular economy and spanning across uh, different industries. Our work are uh, under the guidance of the circular economy policies and have closed the connections with the major government departments relating to, relating to circular economy, such as NDRC, MEP, MIT, and most. Through over 20 years, CCE has gained some honors at home and abroad, such as receiving the full ace graded level of the social organization evaluation and winning the run up at the 2017 Circular Awards. Up to present, we have over 500 members nationwide from large and SME-sized companies covering key energy consume, consuming and waste collection and recycling industries, focusing on each field of circular economy. Our major work is to provide services to national and local level governments, industries and enterprises for implementing policy consultation, standardization work, international cooperation, and organizing events. Relying on these endeavors, we have created several brands which have been widely acknowledged, such as annual high-level development forum, annual uh, report, and official, and official WeChat to disseminate circular economy policies and the best practices at home and abroad. Depending on these major working fields, when, com when, com uh, when companies, especially SMEs, enter China, CC could help to provide relevant information of circular economy opportunities in China from different ways, such as uh, our official website, workshops, membership services. Additionally, we can also provide consultations on policies, plannings, or standards, so as to comply with the requests of the China's market. Next, with the guidance of the circular economy on the EU signed between China and EU governments, CC is also actively taking actions to establish platform and setting a bridge to promote businesses or cooperation to be realized between China and the EU companies. Besides that, uh, according to different demands by company, we can also conduct researches on investigation the specific circular economy market. Of course, we also welcome European company based in China take consideration to join our big family. Finally, I will give two successful cases from our members, both from China and the EU. One is case about his uh, establishment of a recycling value chain for 19 liters PC water bottles. The cooperation has been realized among material manufacturer, combustor, uh, bottle, bottle water and beverage producer, non food spring, and the local recycling plant also. All of those are our members, non food spring collect 1 million sorted uh, bottles per year and prepare them uh, for recycling or sell, shreds the containers and uh, pro processes them into pellets. Convestor will then process, pro process the pellets 
into the newly produced material and transform it into a valuable recycled plastic products such as the glasses or electronic products. This is a, a good case to close the material loop with recycled plastic waste while improving traceability and the quality of the recycled plastic. And the last is the Elbas case about organic waste to energy pellet project located in Hainan. Uh, Elba collecting, collecting collab, no, sorry, Elba cl uh, collaborating with local and private company uh, built a bio CNG processing plant in Hainan, which also is a good example of the food waste treatment solutions for the local uh, city of uh, for the local city in Hainan. The bio CNG produced from the processed uh, food waste will be transferred to the fueling station supplying the clean fuels, which realize the high valued resources utilization of the low valued waste. So that is all my introduction about the uh, 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 about my case experiences from CSE and uh, and the advices. Thank you very thank much you for, for attention. Mm. Thank you very much for the presentation and thank you very much for the uh, for the attention to the time uh, schedule that we're having today, the <laughs> conciseness as well. We're running a little bit behind schedule, but we're of course uh, uh, hoping that everybody will stick around for all of our presentations that we have left. The next one we will go to is uh, from Janja Kreitzmeier Mackenzie at the Ministry of the Environment and Spatial Planning of the Republic of Slovenia. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ms. Martindin, if I could get you to perhaps stop the, uh, the sharing of the slide. Thank you very much. Then do, you, do we have you with us, uh, Janja Kreitzmeier Mackenzie? Yes, can you hear and um, see me? We can, can hear, hear me? you at this point and we cannot see you yet, <laughs> but we can hear you at this point. Oh. And we can see your slide. Well, I will share, can you see my shared screen? Now we can okay, see. Okay, so you will focus on slides. I have camera on, I don't know why. Everything uh -huh. is working now, thank you. Okay. So please, uh, please, Ms. Janja. So I can start, I guess. We're having uh, uh, 10 minutes, so thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much for this invitation uh, and opportunity to present the case of Slovenia. My presentation will be actually on the government approach on um, uh, guiding the transition in Slovenia to circular economy and our activities. Uh, <clears throat> well, we started in 2014 uh, with the premises that the shift to circular economy requires, of course, uh, change of thinking, change of behavior, consumption, production, and uh, we also um, decided that the communication will be the key strategy to try to start to introduce these models and to working with the stakeholders as well. So the first document that Slovenia adopted was a transition a framework program for transition to circular economy, which uh, we needed as a, something that we brought all the sectors together in the government and that the government actually made a decision that this is the way to go. There was clear decision and we were, um, we adopted that. And to set up the framework, how to start this process and what kind of activities should we do? We already had circular models as a priority, but in 2014, when we started to prepare this program, it was too soon in Slovenia to talk about circular economies because a lot of businesses felt left out. So we, we left that green economy. Um, concept as a leading one. Uh, so the way we started to work was through four pillars. One was we started to work with the ministries and uh, within the government uh, trying to link uh, our uh, strategies and our measures. Uh, then uh, we were guiding a structured dialogue with the stakeholders. Uh, and uh, the third pillar was education and training uh, that we provided and then exchange of best practices and collection of best practices in Slovenia. Very important for us at that time was to communicate the roles because we really wanted to get all the partners on board. 
uh, voluntarily and with the with the um, intention to help us uh, as a government because we needed the the cases to uh, see how we can improve our policies not just to create them within our offices uh, very important part of this process was that we created a, a governance structure which was the partnership for green economy which connected seven ministries as a state secretary level and we held regular meetings but we also held meetings together with state secretaries and the stakeholders in slovenia so we had this two um, two way dialogue opened uh, and uh, uh, attracted, we attracted more than 2000 partners, which for Slovenia is quite a big number to work with us. I would like to underline that besides businesses, which are obviously the key for transition to circular economy, we identified also cities as a, a key for transition and why cities? Because cities are closer on the ground, they're really implementing all the policies. Plus, Slovenia does not have a regional government between the national government, so that was obvious as well a uh, choice. But cities are um, holding enormous amount of resources and they have to provide services for the citizens. At the same time, they can set up uh, image, they can set up their brand and that's very important also to attract businesses and what kind of businesses you attract and what kind of conditions cities give to businesses to come to their, their location. Uh, through all this, very important was that we created a process that interlocked all different kinds of activities, preparing different governmental strategies connected with the workshops, discussing, finding best practices on the ground. And I have to say that companies already have a lot of companies already have started this journey to circular economy and they created their own circular economy models they were the best um how should i say um knowledge source in some way because that was real and they can show other companies why they decided to do so and how they did it and also uh we were really happy as a government to work together with them because they showed where are the bottlenecks in our legislation all this process led to us to prepare a roadmap towards the circular economy in slovenia we started in 7 2017 and finished in 2018 the roadmap was prepared by a consortium of experts in Slovenia together uh, in cooperation with our government and um, it was a natural next step uh, that we needed to kind of uh, identify the goals and uh, more than anything identify the opportunities and potentials for circular economy in Slovenia. Uh, we identified at that time four uh, basic areas, food system, forest-based value chains, manufacturing and mobility. And uh, um, in that time also through this process, um, the circular economy concept was by that time included in most of or all of the strategic documents in Slovenia. Um, I will just uh, go quickly. So after the framework program, uh, the roadmap, we were now at the point, okay, how to really implement this. We, we, we had this process to kind of, uh, uh, brought stakeholders on board to uh, communicate circular economy concepts to learn together, but now we wanted to uh, implement it in more concrete projects and uh, more steps in also changing our legislation. So uh, we started after the 2018, we started to work together with uh, some uh, European um, Union uh, organizations. Uh, knowledge organizations, uh, EIT Climate Kick and EIT Raw Materials as the uh, leading ones together with our government and we um, uh, embarked on this quite complex journey that we call a deep demonstration of a circular regenerative economy in Slovenia that is trying to set up or not trying, it's, it's the, the projects is setting up the change, uh, the systemic change in the way we do things. So with this, we want to actually embark uh, the permanent change in the way we address uh, things. The very quick overview of the project, uh, which is very complex, but it has in basis three pillars. One is dealing with regions, communities, and uh, local education. Uh, or lower education. Uh, the second one is dealing with support to the companies and the third one is dealing with support to really policy makers uh, and of course uh, higher education. Um, it's uh, supported with three horizontal programs. One is Center for Smart and Circular Transition that will 
uh, that is key because it's going to orchestrate the whole project, but it also going to serve as a hub for circular economy within Slovenia and within a wider region internationally. Uh, the second one is transformation capital, which will look for synergies in uh, public private resources uh, to um, boost up the investments. And uh, the third one uh, is uh, testing everything in practice through five uh, industrial value chains. This will be very important because this will show us how the change looks on the ground. And we added one area from the roadmap, and this is building that we didn't have before through this process. What uh, is this project trying to do is really, uh, as I mentioned before, change the way we think and do things from uh, financing projects to financing portfolios and so on. So it's really a system innovation. And here the uh, knowledge of these European institutions and know-how that they, they tried, uh, they tested before, is really coming handy also in coordination within our uh, government. But the second important thing is that we are working together within Slovenia. There's nine ministries on board with this pro uh, project, uh, which will be then hopefully the permanent uh, permanent setup. And um, we are working together also uh, within the government as well as with the European institutions. And for phase of uh, implementation, uh, launching the implementation of the program, uh, hopefully in the beginning of next year and setting up this center for circular economy, which for us is really important because it will give, the, uh, give us more capacity for coordination within Slovenia of businesses and, uh, and uh, best cases. Uh, it will um, also have a policy lab that will harvest all the knowledge we will get through these activities into a policy advice and uh, will be a base for stakeholder engagement and international cooperation. Uh, I will be available, since we have to hurry up, I will be available for questions afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation. Um, thank you very much for the presentation, Ms. McKenzie. And we will try and stick to the time plan here, and we'll try to uh, move on to the, to the next program here. So if I could uh, ask you first to uh, stop your screen sharing from your side, then we will jump on to uh, Ms. Stala Strojin botic also from, uh, from Slovenia. This is from the city of Slovenia. City of Ljubljana. City of Ljubljana. City of Ljubljana. Hi. Hi, everybody. Do you hear me? We can hear you and we can see you and I will just be getting your slides up on the screen here just one second. Okay, well, I will try to be as quick as possible. <laughs> Thank because you very I, I, I see that, you know, the, the, the dinner is coming, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the fruit to help us, uh, to help us go, keep going. So uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much for having me and also to giving me an opportunity to share with you uh, Ljubljana's story. I will try to be as quick as uh, possible, uh, but uh, uh, I hope that you will uh, get some impression um, what we are doing uh, in Ljubljana. Uh, so I am the Circular Economy Manager for the city of Ljubljana and next slide please. And uh, as you can see in the picture, hopefully, uh, Ljubljana is uh, indeed a very green city. You know, we have more than 540 square meters green area per capita. And, you know, you can see that uh, landscape parks uh, are situated right in the city. So uh, it is no wonder that sustainable development has been one of our three development goals uh, since 2007, when we have prepared a Vision Ljubljana 2025. And the goal of this vision was also to uh, to be um, uh, to provide the best service for our citizens and also to improve the quality of living. And uh, one of uh, a side effects of this uh, vision uh, was uh, also that we gained uh, one of the most prestigious titles uh, in Europe uh, regarding the sustainability, and this is European Green Capital 2016. Uh, so next slide, please. So after, uh, after um, the 2016, or while we were still living the prestigious title, 
uh, we started to uh, ask ourselves uh, how can we be even better uh, and we have decided uh, to uh, for the transition to circular economy and what you can see is a very simple uh, scheme and uh, as Yanya has already mentioned uh, we are uh, building uh, our transition on communication because we think that this is of most importance uh, that we have to talk to each other and also on including all uh, stakeholders, different uh, stakeholders. Uh, but our activities are mainly focused on three pillars. Uh, so it's on circular decision making and role models. So it's in fact uh, to walk the talk. Uh, the second pillar on assembling value chains and the third pillar what we are doing also today. So it's a knowledge and experience exchange. And all these three pillars uh, have to be connected with innovations and circular business uh, models. So to tackle the, the reality or the situation in different innovative way. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so to uh, highlight some of, uh, some of the good examples from the first pillar, so being a role model. And the first thing we did was uh, inter uh, we have introduced new positions in the city's administration. Uh, not just my position, circular economy manager, uh, and my job is uh, to match make the stakeholders, to assemble value chains, to coordinate different pilot projects and also to disseminate, disseminate uh, good practices but also marketing manager, because it's very important, uh, uh, the visibility of your results, uh, what, or your strategies or your plans so that you can really um, can get all the stakeholders uh, on board. So uh, visibility, very important. Uh, then we have also introduced a position of smart city manager. So um, nowadays um, all the cities are uh, collecting a lot of data. So. Uh, can we um, do something more with this data? Can we connect them? Can we use them? Can we upgrade them? So also a position of smart city manager uh, is very important. And uh, we have also introduced uh, the position of city manager, uh, which is connecting uh, businesses with city administration, with visitors, and is kind of in charge that, you know, everything is, is, is going smoothly in, in the city center. Uh, next slide, please. And um, also on the uh, being a role model, uh, we have decided to also um, uh, prepare a green decision code for city administration employees. Uh, what does that mean? That means that uh, we, we have picked up 10 principles of circular economy and that we have um, prepared a specific guidebook for all city administration employees, uh, or better said, uh, decision makers, how they can make their decisions even more sustainable and, and circular. Uh, and these 10 uh, principles are, uh, so we need to be aware that our decisions make impact, not only on environment, uh, but also on society. And we always have to act transparently, that we have to um, still strengthen the cooperation, not only between uh, different departments and, and uh, administration offices, but also with uh, uh, other stakeholders, with national level, uh, with, with businesses and so on. Uh, and the third one is health is our greatest value. Maybe this is also related to this COVID-19 situation, but you know, health is uh, important. Uh, in our day-to-day -day decisions, uh, we really need to um, implement more digital uh, instead of physical um, solutions. And, you know, also to add uh, new innovations and new circular business models. We have to understand that natural resources are limited. And while, uh, for instance, doing public procurements, uh, try to introduce as many use, uh, repurpose, uh, repair uh, activities as possible. And uh, we also have to support the local uh, environment, especially uh, to connect more closely with our countryside and uh, overall uh, start to reduce the amount of waste. And of course, uh, pay attention to biodiversity, which, which is very, uh, closely related uh, to the picture that you have seen um, on the first slide. Uh, so next slide, please. But, you know, uh, introducing different codes is just a paper, but we also have to encourage our uh, 
public employees employees um, to leave circular and sustainable solutions because if they will leave them uh, actively, then they will also uh, make more circular and sustain sustainable solutions. So we are um, this year we have started to organize uh, circular challenges for our city administration employees, and the first one was on uh, cycling. So uh, city uh, employees were encouraged to. Um, to cycle to and from work uh, and uh, to do as much business uh, as possible by cycling. And 45 employees took the challenge and they have cycled all together in, in one month more than 8,000 kilometers, which might seem a um, fairly uh, small amount uh, or not a long distance, but it is more than uh, the Tour of France and the Spanish Vuelta. Um, which are uh, also very important for Slovenians because uh, both were won by uh, Slovenians this year. And uh, we are just finishing uh, the challenge uh, that um, is represented by introducing exchange markets into our, our uh, offices so that uh, the employees uh, have, um, have a possibility to exchange uh, still useful items. And next year, we will introduce uh, circular challenges on circular offices and on exchange uh, surplus of food. Uh, next uh, slide, please. And uh, going to the second pillar, uh, so assembling uh, value chains. Um, this is a very good example, uh, innovation um, uh, from innovation uh, area. And uh, we have um, uh, this is a practice where we have uh, processed invasive alien plant species into useful products and input materials for industry instead of incinerating them and comp composting them. And we have developed within this project uh, 65 ways of uh, doing so. And uh, we have included uh, in this three-year project uh, 185 people and 92 people uh, of, of um, of the team uh, came from the researchers um, um, area. So it is very important to introduce uh, new solutions, new innovations into, um, into already existing uh, pro or problem solving. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so this is uh, also one of uh, a good examples and a very interesting example of how you can repurpose uh, an old public bus into mobile youth center. And you can also repurpose uh, the fabrics uh, from the seats uh, of this bus into different slippers or, or baskets for animal shelters and so on. So, you know, you just really have to, to keep an open mind and you can really uh, reuse, repurpose, uh, re rebuild, uh, you know, anything, uh, anything that, that, uh, that is available. Uh, next slide, please. Um, this is also one of the very interesting and popular um, uh, projects. Uh, it's uh, about um, using, uh, using some um, uh, building areas that will be built on in the near future. But uh, while the, the, the building um, still uh, didn't start, uh, you can hand it over to uh, NGOs or schools or child, uh, school children or, or businesses and on these areas they can uh, they are allowed to experiment, learn, socialize, play and of course you can also uh, relocate uh, uh, all infrastructure uh, after the start of the building. And uh, also what, what we are interesting or we are encouraging that uh, all items on this, this kind of areas are made from uh, reuse. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and this is also um, a very interesting uh, practice that we, are, uh, uh, that, that we made uh, with businesses and it was on voluntary base. And in the city center, we have asked uh, the retailers um, to offer only paper or biodegradable shopping bags instead of uh, plastic bags. And uh, 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 every retailer that has decided to do so uh, was uh, received a special sticker and we are promoting them. on a special uh, and uh, we are also trying to um, to
organize um, all events. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and Ms. Ochis, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we are sort of running out of time. I don't know if it's possible to uh, to wrap up in sort of a concluding slide. Yes, it, it's my last slide. Okay, perfect. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it's my last slide, actually. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, so coming to the third pillar, the exchange knowledge, uh, we feel very strongly that we really have to take responsibility for actions. And of course, uh, um, this also means that we are signing different international or European um, commitments. One of them is we are signatories of New Plastic Economy Global Commitment organized by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation and UNEP. Uh, we have also signed in October European Circular Cities Declaration, which is coordinated by ICLE and different partners. And we are also a very uh, active member of the EuroCities, which is the largest uh, network of uh, European cities. More than 140 um, cities are collaborating in this network. And it is uh, very important that we really continue to exchange knowledge and experience. And uh, every year we are also welcoming a lot of uh, delegations, not from Europe, also from, from other parts of the wor uh, world and, of course, also um, the Chinese uh, cities are very welcome if they want to, uh, to learn more about our circular story. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, Ms. Kotic, for sharing with us this, uh, this perspective from a city perspective. So that will conclude the final of our online presentations. Our next one will be uh, Ms. Sarah Jang from Bottle Loop. Uh, 